Three years after releasing one of the best LEGO Harry Potter sets of all time, LEGO decided to go back on that decision and remake the entirety of Diagon Alley, starting off with Weasley's Wizard Weezers. So today I wanted to do a comparison between the two buildings to work out ultimately which one is the best one and which kind of Diagon Alley system you should invest your money in. The giant one where you get all of the buildings all at once, or put your eggs into LEGO's brand new system that may or may not turn out good. But first let's talk about this new one. I did an entire review going through it in detail, but basically this thing is is incredibly tiny. And unlike the major Diagon Alley, it is built up on plates rather than base plates, which makes this stand off the ground a little bit better, but ultimately is going to make it a lot better for customization going forwards. And since this was its own little release set, there is a much more interesting figure selection than I guess Diagon Alley has. Now another interesting point about this set is that it came with its own little side build, so kind of like Diagon Alley, you actually get multiple buildings in one set. However, this building is incredibly tiny, it is just a 6x6 six six structure, so I, I don't know if you really want to call it a building, but I'm gonna call it a building. And just like Diagon Alley as well, it has Technic pins so that you can snap the whole thing together and make it connect like this. Now this set retails for 90 US dollars and came with seven mini figures. And overall, this is your entire value, which does feel like a lot for quite little. However, when Diagon Alley got released, the retail price was 400 US dollars. It did get bumped up though in the Lego price increases. So it now retails for 450 US dollars, but in that you get four buildings. So in order to make this more of a fair comparison, we're going to divide that price by four and kind of price the Weasley's Wizard Weezers building at 112 US dollars and 50 cents. Also for minifigures, it's a little bit hard with that one since the set kind of combined a bunch of things, but I'm going to say that there's at least two because you got the Weasley twins. However, those minifigures as well are exactly the same as the ones in this set. But that is the major point in mind when comparing these two sets is that with this one, you can just buy the one building. However, with the other model, you kind of have to buy the whole pack package of four unless you find someone on Bricklink or Facebook Marketplace or eBay or whatever that's just selling Weasley's Wizard Weezers. So here is it in comparison to the original Diagon Alley model. Now a couple of things straight off the bat with this one. My one has a light kit installed and I also had to kind of adjust the top of it in order to fit it in my shelf. So just for reference, here is what the building is supposed to look like in its original form. Mine is very slightly modified so I thought I would kind of address that before we get into it. But even that aside, the first biggest difference is the size of this thing. Thing, the Diagon Alley model is significantly taller and more closely resembles a typical Lego modular building, whereas the newer one definitely is more of a standard Lego playset. Another big difference is that instead of having a second building, of course, it has got the Nocturne Alley archway, which kind of just sits off the side. The original Diagon Alley building definitely caters more towards adult collectors. It is far more of a display piece than it is a playset, and just kind of how robust the building is really kind of shows that. I also love how this incorporated the base plates and had a cobblestone and kind of a street front out the side of it, which you did not get with the playset. There is very minimal space on the front of this building for minifigures to stand on and you kind of just got to place it on the table and use the table in front of it rather than the original set, which had space and stud connections that minifigures can stand out the front. And over the last couple of years, I've left Fred and George kind of greeting people out the front door, which is definitely not a thing that you can do on the newer one. Now, exterior wise, they pretty much both share the same shape. However, the newer one does kind of take more of a corner angle, whereas the original is a little bit more of a rectangle. You kind of get that side street thing, but it's really blocked off by the Nocturne Alley archway. That being said, you still get two doors on each of them. You still get two giant windows. However, the newer one definitely has kind of that third curved archway, which is really nice and a detail that I really like on the building, but I also don't think it was necessary on the original. One thing that I'm really glad that the playset version carried on was all of the sticker detailing on the curved pieces at the top of the windows. It really adds a lot to the exterior of the set and I'm incredibly glad to see that that was present. You've also still got those same kind of orange and purple balloon looking things as well as a hat with a moving arm. Now one thing that the playset did get a little bit more accurate than the original one was having a little rabbit on the top. However, it can't exactly go inside the hat because the hat has a flat base. Not that I think you'd be able to do that on the original version either. However, this was an entire play feature with a little little lever that you can move at the very top to kind of control it yourself, which I think is really neat. Whereas the other one, it can kind of be posed a little bit more as it's made up of hinge pieces and clip pieces rather than Technic gears. The color scheme on the arm of the original as well is definitely not as accurate as the newer version. I really like the way that they've incorporated that kind of medium nougat, even though it should be a little bit darker technically to match the Weasley twins torsos. It's definitely a lot closer than using bright yellow, but ultimately I think that was 
was done because of the Technic joints used in it. The original one's size though by far gives it a major advantage. Firstly when it came to kind of the buildable Weasley twin in the window as it looks a little bit more human as the kind of playset one reminds me more of like a skinny tiny quick twig like slender man type of thing just by how tall and small it had to be in order to fit inside the window but I'm really glad that that was able to be replicated in both sets. Now one thing that the original one did have though as well was a couple of little extra details on the exterior being kind of placed there by some sticker pieces on the panels on the sides. There was also these green and black balloons present and then of course Nocturne Alley is its whole separate thing but overall I just really like how detailed every corner of this building was whereas you didn't really get that privilege on the playset version but for what it is and its size I still think it did a really good job. However the biggest differences definitely come down to the interior. You can just see such a stark contrast in the amount of stuff that basically was being able to put inside the two models. The original Diagon Alley had a fully fleshed out staircase, the store displays felt a little bit more alive and there was a lot more room for minifigures to really interact with. It's definitely a lot darker because they completed off the roof whereas the playset definitely did not have any of that. There's a lot more light that's able to get let in as an example and there's still a reasonable amount of space for minifigures to be placed in but it is nowhere near the same amount that the Diagon Alley version has. All of the displays in the Diagon Alley one feel a lot more unique whereas in the playset every single stand was basically the same technique repeated over and over again with different sticker detailing. Now there is a lot more variety when it comes to kind of the Weasley products that are available on the playset version which is something I absolutely love and I feel like kind of combining this with the Diagon Alley version is really going to get you the best version of Weasley's Wizard Weasleys you can get especially with the Puking Pastels build but the repetition really makes it feel a little bit more basic than the Diagon Alley version. The playset one though did include one detail which I'm really shocked wasn't included in the Diagon Alley version and that is the kind of little umbrage toy that is swinging from the ceiling. I get kind of why it wasn't included in Diagon Alley since there's not really a space for it. However, since it was present in this playset one, it kind of makes me question why it wasn't included at all in Diagon Alley since it's a really notable thing. I really wish that it was carried over here and I think it would have just been the last thing to really top off Weasley's Wizard Weezers. I mean, to me with these buildings, there's really no competition. I mean, of course the giant version has to take the cake here. It is just a lot more robust. It's a lot more display friendly. It still fits on a shelf pretty nicely, even though I did have to mod mine a little bit just to get its height to work. But that that being said, it's an absolutely gorgeous building and feels really robust and is incredibly detailed both inside and out, which I feel like just wasn't possible on the playset. That being said, you have to buy a giant set in order to get access for this building and that is really where that building gets let down. If you don't have the money for it, the playset version is absolutely the way to go when you want a Diagon Alley building. However, when it comes to value for money, the playset is definitely not it. <laughs> this is just far too small for the price tag that you are paying and for just this portion of the building to technically be $12 extra. I It just really makes me wonder why that kind of wasn't put into this model just to make it a little bit more fleshed out, a little bit more grand because this just completely trumps this. Like the fact that I could buy this and like a Star Wars battle pack and that would be the same price as just this building on its own is a little bit mind boggling to me. I kind of wonder why that wasn't done in the first place. Now that being said, obviously this newer Weasley's Wizard Weasley's is considerably smaller than the kind of giant Diagon Alley buildings but I guess the next question is how how does this actually stack up in comparison to the original Diagon Alley buildings which were much more of a playset size and were kind of just like three buildings all thrown into one. It kind of followed a more similar structure to the 2020 model but containing the scale of these newer playset models. And the short answer is incredibly well. If you have this original Diagon Alley and you kind of just want a Weasley's Wizard Weezers to complete it all, this is absolutely an amazing pick. It is really really cool to see these two side by side because as a kid having Weasley's Wizard Weezers is always something that I I really wanted and I felt was missing from the original Diagon Alley as much as I wanted this set and I really think the scale was kind of kept with that in mind and just seeing how amazing that original Diagon Alley set is and specifically this Green God's Bank building is if Lego can keep up that I really think that this new Diagon Alley system is gonna be an absolute treat. The only real difference between the original Diagon Alley and this newer Diagon Alley is the lack of modular pins on the original. They were all meant to just be three separate buildings rather than connected into a giant street front but if you really wanted to modify it and have it connect then you could however I don't really necessarily think that that is overall needed. But those are the two Weasley's Wizard Weezers buildings let me know which of the two is your favorite in the comments down below and if you guys enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel down below but until next time I'll see you later.